What's up guys, Wes Maju here from Wacom Technology with what I'm calling a rainy day tip on kind of a sunny day. What I'm gonna do is take this sunny day at the lake and make it a little bit cloudy, make it a little bit foggy, maybe turning it into an early morning light and we're gonna actually write on the window as if we're looking outside wishing it was the gorgeous day that we see right here. So what I wanna do is I need to create a window to place in front of this nice sunny scene to then make it foggy and then write on. Well, I didn't have one, so what I did was I took a little water bottle, spritzed a little water on my window in my house, and just kind of looked up at the sky, snapped a frame with my iPhone. And this is gonna serve as our window with our raindrops. So I'm gonna tab back over to our sunny lake scene here. I'm gonna select all by hitting Command or Control A, and then Command or Control C to copy it. Once again, tabbing back over to our spritzed window, I'm gonna go ahead and paste this by hitting Command or Control V over the top. Now, if you look in our layers panel, you'll see we have our lake scene right above our window, and I'll toggle that visibility on and off there. Now, if you simply change the blend mode from normal to overlay, you're gonna let that window show through, and that looks, well, it looks pretty good. It kinda looks like maybe the sun was coming out, but that's not the look I'm going for. Rather, I wanna introduce a little bit of fog. I want it to look like it's kind of a rainy day, maybe a rainy morning. So to do that, I'm going to undo the change of that blend mode from normal to overlay, and I'm gonna make a couple of adjustments. Now, if we toggle the visibility on and off once again for a second, you can see that these raindrops are kind of in focus. Well, that's gonna be somewhat our focus right there. So everything behind it should have a shallower depth of field or otherwise be a little bit blurry. So I'm gonna start off by going up under Filter, coming down here to Blur, and then selecting Gaussian Blur. Now what's right or wrong here is really a matter of preference. It all depends on how much you wanna take that background out of focus. I'm gonna leave my radius at about uh, six or seven there. Six looks pretty good. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I wanna introduce a little bit more fog. And to do so, I'm gonna come back under Filter and I'm gonna come down here to Camera Raw Filter. Now if you don't already know this, you can apply the effects that you find in Camera Raw within any type of image, whether it be a PSD or JPEG, TIFF, what have you, by running it as a filter. And I'm gonna go over here to the Effects panel that says FX right up there. And I'm gonna take advantage of this new feature introduced in Photoshop uh, CC 2015, and that's dehaze. Now this particular feature was designed to, well, take haze out of an image, but actually what I'm gonna do is go the opposite direction. I'm gonna drag it down and then kind of create kind of a cooler sort of a scene. Uh, and now that looks pretty good, but it also looks a little too green for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over to the original or back to the basic panel and I'm gonna drag the Vibrance slider down to the left just a little bit, and that's gonna take some of that green tone out of it. And now I'll go ahead and tap OK. So now there's our foggy scene. So if we go back up to our Layers panel and change the Blend Mode from Normal to Overlay at this point, it's gonna look a little bit more cooler, a little bit more uh, brighter in the day. All right, so with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the Command or Control key, and I'm gonna tap on the new layer icon. Now notice that I have layer one selected. When I hold down the Command or Control key and click on the new layer icon, it's gonna create a new layer, but below the layer that I had selected as opposed to above. And the reason why I'm doing this is this is going to be our type layer or where we're gonna write some words onto the window that we've just kind of fogged up a bit. Now I've got my paintbrush selected already and I'm gonna hit F5 on the keyboard to bring up my brush panel. Now incidentally, I have the brush preset panel nested up against the brush panel. So I can basically piggyback that F5 keyboard shortcut to bring open both panels. And if you didn't have that, it might look something like this. And if I close that up, you have this brush preset button right here in the brush panel. If I turn that on, you could see it would open up over there. But instead what I did was I took that brush preset panel tapping on the very top of that panel, dragging to the left to where my cursor sits right above the right-hand side of that panel. You see how it turns blue, and that basically allows me to nest the two panels together. So again, I can piggyback that original panel or that brush panel. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to select a brush. I'm gonna select this very topmost uh, default brush right up here at the top of my brush preset panel. If I hover my cursor over this brush long enough, it's going to say hard round pressure size. That basically means I've got a hard edge brush, whereas pressure is going to affect the size of the brush. And if we look in the brush preview window, you can see it's gonna go from very thin to thick and back to thin again. I wanna use my pressure sensitive pen to adjust the size, but rather than go from such a drastic size of thin to thick, I'm gonna drag this minimum diameter slider to about 50% or so. 
There we go. So now the softest uh, touch of my pen is going to be about this wide. The heaviest touch is going to be about this wide. So not a whole lot of variance there, and that's fine because what I want to do is I want to mimic the effects of my fingertip as if I were drawing on the window. So now I'm going to hit F5 on the keyboard once more to get rid of that. And I'm going to adjust my brush size by using the touch ring on my Intuos Pro tablet. I'm going to drag my finger around the touch ring and decrease the size of that brush. And now I'm just going to write with black on this layer. I'm going to write, uh, let's see here, let's just write uh, rainy day. And you can adjust the brush size. Well, I guess it depends on how fat your fingertip is, but you can adjust that brush size however you like. And we're just going to say rainy day just like this, just drawing this out on my tablet. And of course, if it's a rainy day and we want it to be sunny, we're kind of sad. So we're going to go ahead and draw a, uh, a, a smiley, an unsmiley face, a frowning face. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to overlay once again. Again, that's going to let that layer beneath show through a little bit more. So now we've got our foggy, rainy window. And I'm going to grab my move tool and I can move this around a little bit. And now that looks pretty good. Now, if I back out, let's just see this so we can see uh, our, our entire frame here. It looks a little bright up here on the top. I'm going to adjust that by tapping on the layer one layer, the topmost layer. I'm going to come down to my layers panel, the very bottom of my layers panel, and I'm going to draw or select a curves adjustment layer. And then I've got this little option right here check. This is my on image adjustment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tap. I'm going to find kind of a mid gray tone uh, or a lighter gray tone, and I'm going to tap with my pen to the tablet and I'm going to drag down just a little bit right there. And now I like the detail that's going on in the sky. Might be a little too dark right down here. Again, it all depends on the kind of effect that you're going for. If you want that darker kind of a rainy day, well, that might be fine. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take advantage of the layer mask that's associated with this adjustment layer. And I'm going to conceal some of the darkness, darkness that's been created down here in the lower right hand side. So to do that, I'm going to hit F5 on the keyboard once more, and I'm going to select my brush tool by hitting the B key on the keyboard, and I'm going to change brushes. I'm going to select this brush right here. This brush is set so that the opacity is going to be adjusted by pressure, and uh, that's going to allow me to gently fade out that darkness and bring back the lighter color. Okay, so that's selected. Again, you can see transfer is selected. That's the preset for this particular brush, and now it's going to fade from light to dark back to light again based on how hard I physically press my pen to the tablet. So now I'm going to increase the size of my brush, and I've already toggled over to it, but I'm going to do it once more. I've hit the touch ring toggle, that's the button right in the center there, to switch over to the brush size. And now running my finger around that ring again, I can increase the size of the brush. And now pressing my pen to the tablet very, very gently, I'm going to reveal that lighter scene once more. There we go. So barely touching my pen to the tablet. I just want to bring that back just a little bit. And now we can kind of even out some of that darkness that we had created. And there we go. So that's our rainy day image right there. I'll offer you one last tip, and this is kind of optional, but it's something that I do sometimes if I ever have to create this kind of a look. I would kind of uh, wrap the, the writing, if you will, around some of the drops on the image. And to do so, you can select this rainy day layer, and you can select this kind of smudge tool right here. And if I zoom in a little bit, let's find some of these and you can kind of just sort of wrap it around. And now this, this particular tool I'll point out kind of blurs the edges and the way water would kind of curve around water drops would be kind of a hard edge. So you want to be kind of subtle with this. You don't want it to look too faded out there. And I'm basically looking at the bottom of the letters, you know, again, because as water collects around where you've drawn, it's going to wrap around the drops on the windows. There we go. Another option would be to um, perhaps open up the uh, liquify filter and you can kind of just pull and twist and pull things out, pull the, uh, the writing out around some of your letters or just down in general. But again, I like to do this kind of by hand because it allows me to, uh, again, curve around the letters with or the drops of water with more control. All right, there you go. So we'll back out of that. You can see that that starts to pull in a little bit more of a, a little bit more realism there as you wrap around some of those eye drop, uh, water drops, not eye drops, water drops. So there you go. That's a quick way to create kind of a foggy, rainy day from a sunny day image. Hope you enjoy it.